slightly high, very intoxicated, and my anxiety is higher than it's ever been. <laughs> Sounds like the makings of a good ass episode. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Headphones good. Y'all hear everything? Yeah. I see it's not as high energy from Cameron. That's gonna. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. We shall see. You know, since he a little bit shook up, Chris, why don't you go ahead and send this sad theme music? No, actually, no, you did last time, Cameron. <laughs> Muster up a little bit of that energy for me. I was like, what's he doing over there? Everybody's being weird now. You uh, shot Cameron, me. paranoid. Yeah, I don't trust nobody. <laughs> said- DTA! <laughs> don't trust anyone. What? <laughs> all right, all right, you ready? Yep. Theme music. Stay tuned, folks. Let's go. Home video hustle. 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 Home hustle. Motherfucking hustle. Hustle. Motherfucking hustle. Hustle. Motherfucking hustle. So Cameron, what did you think about? <laughs> Everybody wants to know, but you can't know yet because I have to tell you that this is the home of the home home. home this is the home of the hustle. I'm so excited. I can't even talk. I can't wait for this. I should have recorded us watching this movie. That was a fail on my part, but we kept the lights off, so it was dark. So you mm-hmm. might not be able to see anyway. But first and foremost, what's going on, everybody? I'm Brent. I'm Chris. <clears throat> I'm Cam. And this is the Home Video Hustle, where we do what? Hustle motherfucking hustle. You goddamn right. And also where we face our fears. That's what this is all about this week, because episode 266 is our third time doing a second viewing, I'm pretty sure. It was uh, Equilibrium, then Superfly, and now this. I'm pretty sure. Unless I don't think I'm forgetting one. Home video, so Mike Baffert will let me know if I'm fucking up. But just know that we did A Nightmare on Elm Street way back when. And we've told that story many times. But let me double check my notes, my, my scorebook right here. We did Nightmare, Nightmare on Elm Street originally was episode 27. And we recorded that November 8th, 2017. PJ gave it a 9. I gave it an 8. And we're coming back to it this time because, well, I mean, if we've been a long time listeners, they all know. But just in case you don't know, or you actually know it, I'll let the man tell it himself. Because this, uh, he's here. Why are we doing this again? Well, <laughs> I've had a, uh, how old am I? 20, 27. Is that, is that how old you are? Mm-hmm. He's born in 95. I'm trying to think. When, when was Pee Wee? About late 90s. Right? Yeah, yeah. About 99, 98-ish. 99, 2000. Nah, it wasn't before that, I think, even. Really? Uh, was like what, 98? Yeah, 98, man. 99, 98. Might have been 98, 99. Yeah, that's probably something. So, we've told the backstory of Pee Wee before. Recently, yeah. And just a recap. <clears throat> At a young age, we went to a babysitter who <laughs> is very, very, very sick in the head. <laughs> <laughs> and to get kids to obey her demands... She used torture of many kinds. Torture! Including <laughs> the watching of horror movies. Yes. To control attitude, I guess. And me being a nuisance everywhere I go, I was put in the position to watch Nightmare on Elm Street, and it scarred me for life. To this day. To this day! 27 years old. I would have been at Pee Wee's probably about three, four years old. So this is a battle of 24 years. That's right. <laughs> almost a quarter century and to give backstory for the podcast episode when we did this episode back in 2017 this same dvd case was out sitting on the mm. tv stand up here and i love this one of my favorite stories because camera came in the door and that dvd case was sitting facing up camera was in mid-sentence he's like hey what's up what's up how y'all doing that stopped just like that because he saw that dvd case and he took it he flipped it over to the back and then right back into conversation again. That's what you're dealing with here, folks. And so I was actually surprised that he wanted to do this. Because I didn't think this would ever happen. That was the reason why me and PJ did it in the first place. Because I was like, Cameron would never do this shit. And because PJ had never seen it before also. 
Well, but now the time has come, Cameron. This is for you guys. That's right. This was for you, Morph. <laughs> <laughs> Who got that reference? Did Chris? Did you, ah, see, Chris watched the X Men animated cartoon from 1992. Yes, is that 92? I'm pretty sure it was. Jesus, Christ. I I surfed like through bits and pieces of watching it, watching a, a series. There you go. I just I watched all of them when I watched Spider Man on Disney. How'd you not get my reference? Morph. Hey, this is for you, Morph. This was for you, Morph. Like this first episode. Yeah, I think it's early in. I think I don't remember. I don't remember which episode. Man, I watched because so he many died that like, first man. episode. Oh shit! There you go. It was years ago. <clears throat> so. so what was that? I said? That was episode twenty-seven before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in this time, episode two hundred and sixty-six is a Nightmare on Elm Street, nineteen eighty-four. Not that remake bullshit. Even though I, I think we'll get to that at some point. So we'll see if Cameron wants to continue this journey. We'll see where Cameron taps out. I think I have a good idea where. But we'll try and persuade him to get to that movie too. I know where I'm gonna tap out. Where? New night. That's what I was talking about. We'll, we'll get him to watch it, folks. There's a there's a reason behind it. Oof. There you go. Yeah, years ago. I, it's is, been years since I've seen New Nightmare. So this is when my dad was selling Obets. Mm-hmm. This is the old sci-fi. This ain't Siffy. It's the sci-fi channel. This is sci-fi. Sci-fi. I have fell I fell asleep watching something on sci-fi. And it's that Halloween time of the year, you know, they're going they're going to show their horror movies and shows all that shit. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what I was watching. I don't even know why the fuck I was watching sci-fi. <laughs> they show good stuff on there. It might probably was beyond belief knowing you. I want to say it was cuz I had them recorded for so it was probably beyond belief. And I remember they came on they showed a whole day of them, but at four o'clock in the morning, they went off. Not this time. So <laughs> at four o'clock in the morning, I I specifically looked on the guy. It said paid programming. <laughs> okay. Four o'clock in the morning. If I wake up, it's going to be some infomercial or whatever. All right. Four o'clock comes around. I didn't wake up. I woke up about five. And this is wintertime, so it's still dark around five o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. I wake up and I lay there for a second and I I can hear <laughs> like dramatic music in the background. Okay, paid programming was supposed to be on till seven a.m. Right. I look over and I knew it. I knew it from the music. I heard the voice. I knew what I was dealing with. I had to turn around. I sl- I did that dumb shit where I, I have a a habit of sleeping on the couch. I sleep with my face this way. <laughs> yeah, I never do that. I always never. do it. It's most comfortable for me when I sleep this way. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I turned around and it's Freddy Krueger in a hospital or some shit. That's one of the best parts of the movie. With his fucking mm-hmm. hand in the air and he looks over at the fucking camera right as I turned around. He looks right at the TV. <laughs> the fucking remote was on the other side. My dad had a habit of coming downstairs. so He wouldn't turn the TV off sometimes. But he'll take the remote and put it right in front of the fucking TV. Oh, yeah. Set it down. And, of <laughs> course, I can't turn this shit off because I have to go near the fucking screen. But he's staring at me. <laughs> staring at me. <laughs> he's staring at me. Medicine so there was nothing I can do but just like watch the movie until that scene went away. And it showed like, some just regular people. I was able to hurry up and get the remote and turn that shit off. I think I turned on at six in the morning. I think it was Hey Arnold. <laughs> she hey in the morning. Hey, we watching Freddy. <laughs> Bullshit. I don't want no blood. <laughs> <laughs> you want no cookies? <laughs> oh shit. So that's that's why I don't want to watch New Nightmare. I told myself I would never look at that movie. Then I found out he's supposed to be like real now in that movie, so he can like you don't have to be. Well, because it actually like the. The actors from this movie play themselves in that movie because they even show Robert England, the guy that plays Freddy. He's like he's like on some talk show dressed up like Freddy, and he's like playing to the crowd and everything. No, mm-hmm. uh, so it's like yeah, it's supposed to be he's he's basically what happened is when they pull him into he's pulled into the real world somehow. I forget how though, but yes. Yeah, so. so it's like the actress that played Nancy in this movie has to actually in her real life kill Freddy. Yeah, and I I'm good. I didn't want to. I'm cool in that movie. It's another story. I've even my dad reminded me about. When it comes to Freddy, I don't even remember telling you this. It was one night I was sitting on the porch and I'm sitting out there with my friends and it's trick or treat night. What about your friends? And we, you know, we go do our trick or treating and shit. <laughs> and a motherfucker dressed up as Freddy Krueger was riding around the neighborhood scaring people and shit. <laughs> so that's another reason I'm, I'm cool. 
Cause he was just getting out the car, like running up to your porch and like trying to scare you and shit. And of course, all my friends, oh, that's funny. It was my, I, I ran to the other fucking street. I'm not fucking with that dude. He <laughs> might be real. <laughs> they looking at me. What the hell wrong with you? <laughs> you, re- you probably reacted like I, how I reacted the first time. Uh, there was a uh, dog. Um, I was walking up the street with my friend. We was um, we was headed to an, uh, somebody's house, and I I got to like the um. The middle school, uh, no, yeah, the middle school over near, um, near my house when I lived over, um, up north on Mays Road. Mm-hmm. Like there, we got there and there's somebody let their dog loose. Who let, let the dogs out? I don't know. <laughs> woof, 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 woof. <laughs> yeah, um, I, 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 saw <laughs> the dog, I saw the dog out the corner of my eye. And, uh, so I was like, so I I backed up and was uh, gone by halfway up the street. By the time my friend saw it, mm-hmm. it the dog started chasing him around around the um the, the school uh, parking lot and everything. I was like, I was halfway up the street already. He was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, I don't take no chances. He was like, he was like a Rottweiler trying to chase him around. Shit. Yeah, I'm good. But yeah, so new new nightmare now. He'll watch it. I'll try. It. I, I mean, I I probably will. This is, it, Hey, this is training. This is Cameron Star Wars now. <laughs> you can watch them all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. 1984, an hour and 31 minutes long. How much y'all think this cost to make? Mm, There's a whole lot going on. These effects were pretty good. Oh, 84. 1984. No real true... A list actors, no A list actors. I don't really think mm-hmm. there's known actors, but no A list actors. Also, no A list actors, unless you count Mitchell. It was a man with a glove running around chasing people with probably a mask on, makeup and shit. Yeah, man. so that doesn't cost all. I'm gonna say 1.2. Wrong. Very slightly lower, Chris. 1.1 million. <laughs> Cameron out here PJ and shit. Bitch. How much you think it made, though? There are several of these, so remember this. I'm going to say the first one, I'm going to say 24. Wrong! Higher. 30 million? Wrong! Higher. 48. Wrong! Higher. 50? Wrong! Higher. What the hell? 65. Lower. 60. Wrong! Lower. Uh, Wrong! Lower. <laughs> 55. Wrong! Higher. 57. 57 million dollars. Jesus Christ. On a 1.1 million dollar budget. That's why you got sequels and TV shows and whatnot. Mm-hmm. IMDB. The user is something .4 out of 10. 235,792 votes. What do you think you these people something gave? What point? Something .4. Seven. Seven point four. Say eight. Rotten Tomatoes. The critics, accumulatively, out of one hundred percent, what do you think they thought? Eighty-one. Wrong. Higher. Eighty-five. Wrong. Higher. Wrong. Higher. Ninety-five. Ninety-five percent out of one hundred. The critics loved it. Jesus Christ. Audience, out of one hundred percent. Ninety-one. Wrong. Lower. Eighty-one. Wrong! Higher. 85. Wrong! Very slightly lower. 84. 84%. Dang, the critics liked it more? Yep. Night on Elm Street is written and directed by Wes Craven. Starring John Saxon, Ronnie Blakely, Heather Langenkamp, Amanda Weiss, Nick Corey, Johnny Depp, and of course, Robert Ingram. Second viewing for the Home Video Hustle. Since we've done, we've done this already. We were, we talked about this movie back in 2017. It's fine. So we don't have to sh- strictly go step by step, beat by beats. Mm-hmm. This is mainly all about Cameron's experience facing his enemy. Yes. But I will ask. Well, I will ask. Did you notice there was that New Line logo? Did you notice something different about it? I don't know. It was red, right? They didn't have the uh, the film reel little floating logo yet. This yeah. is because New Line super. Super not doing much at this point. They hadn't become New Line's <coughs> pictures really yet. New Line actually was saved by a Nightmare on Elm Street. That's why they were started to refer to the New Line as the house that Freddie built. Because they needed a hit. And $57 million, they got the fucking hit they wanted. 
They got that hit. I don't think you get the actual like New Line logo that you all know about until the third movie, even. <laughs> I think the second one kind of has the little red, like flashy logo like this one had, too. I think. I think so. That sounds about right. So, yes, Freddy's, you, all those movies you love, Deep Cover, Friday, Minute Society, thank Freddy for those movies. Rush because Hour. Rush Hour. <laughs> yep. A lot of your favorite movies exist with this company because of Freddy Krueger. Remember that, Cameron. Without Freddy, there's no new line cinema. How you feel about that? <laughs> Jackie Chan movies, when they got popularized, because they brought all of those here to America. Rumble in the Bronx, released by New Line. Mr. Nice Guy, Police Story 4. I think that's the, only, that one, the only one I haven't seen is Mr. Nice I Guy. I own the uncut version on Blu-ray. I could have threw that in the bag, but I didn't. <clears throat> <laughs> Cameron, how's the start? I'm going to down this first. <laughs> down that drink? Oh, go ahead. Some ASMR. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> I broke my back. <laughs> Spinal. <laughs> there you go. He actually did down that photo. What's in there? Kool-Aid and Truly. Mm-hmm. There you go. So I've down that, down the other one. You know we want some Kool-Aid. What else? And I drank that. You drank some Malibu too. Camera got drunk for this movie. Mm-hmm. See if it was worth it. How did it start, Cameron? <clears throat> um, I, uh, Lifeline. Lifeline. Oh, you want to phone a friend? I was like, wait, what does that mean? Um, cool, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> this movie started. Another off- movie you couldn't have without Freddie. That's. <laughs> <laughs> the movie starts out um, with white friends. <laughs> no, no before, he, that, before, that, Tina, before that, before that, before that, before that, before that. There's Who's, something before that. What's happening over the credits? Um, music. <laughs> Technically, yeah. There's a little. It's like shoebox style. It's like a little frame inside the pit middle of the picture, and you see Freddy Krueger down in his boiler room creating oh, his glove. Yeah. Yeah, he's making the glove. That, that flashback. Yeah, that's why I asked you, like, he's fucking human. Gloves. Yes, he's he was human at that point. He won't be in time. But yes, before you even talk to, you don't even see the fringe. Yet. Y'all skipped the whole part because they show him creating his glove. But then you see a girl named Tina mm-hmm. running around the boiler room. I remember that. Well, tell yeah. me about it then. Um. <laughs> This is a camera centric episode. Is I'm going to go to you mostly. <laughs> um, bro's making the glove. Right, gets no love. Then you see the chick, like you said, mm-hmm. look like she's Tina. walking around some dark ass hallway, boiler room, boiler room, pipes, steam, heat, moisture. <laughs> oh, that word is so moist. <laughs> moist. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. She's getting chased around. She's yeah. walking around looking, you, you, looking scared. You get your first little glimpses of your boy, old Fred Krueger. They ain't really showing him. No, then he just look like nah, he's like in more shadow and shit. Yeah, you get because she wakes up finally, and yeah. then you hear you get a, your first time you get to hear your song. Yeah, one two, Freddie's coming for you. Three four, better lock your door. Five, Five, six, six grab, grab your crucifix. crucifix. Seven, eight. Never stay, stay up late. Up late. Oh, Nine, ten. Yeah, sorry. Never sleep, sleep again. again. I mashed them together. There you go. But they don't say it like that. It's like, one, two, Freddy's coming for you. That type of shit. It's like a little game. It's one of those things where kid, the girls are playing jump rope and they're singing it as they jump rope. Mm. So it's like childhood shit. They're not singing about getting shot by the FBI word? and wanting collard greens and shit. What's the word for that shit? It's not folk song. Nursery rhymes. Nursery rhymes. There you go. Yeah, nursery rhymes about a, a child killer. Child murder. There, now we get to talk about your group of friends. What are their names? Did you get any of them? Tina. One. That's the girl that was just dreaming. I'm dreaming. Uh, I don't know. Dude, I can't call him Johnny, but I don't know his actual name. Glenn. 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 Okay, that's mm-hmm. That's Johnny. two. You got two more. Lead actress. Lead character, I should say. Well, we don't know that yet. You think the girl getting chased is the lead, but she'll find out in time that that's not true. But... Uh, 
Lashana? No. Lashana is the other movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, your, movie your movie behind uh, Nancy. Nancy. Okay, Nancy. And you got your man's that got locked up. Uh, uh, um, um, Axel. No, it was. You're that. close. Mm. Alex. No, it's not an A name, but. Is it? I was not, close in what way? It's, it's, it's not it's, Wave, but the first name. Is it bro, not Brody? Bruce? I thought, I thought he would get that. Rod. Rod. I couldn't remember. <laughs> oh, there you go. Honestly, I never remember his name. He said Axel. I was like, I thought he was trying to be funny at first. I was going to start naming Twisted Metal Rod. people. <laughs> and Sweet Tooth. <laughs> Spectre. I don't know. He had a leather jacket. I just gave him a cool name. No, Rod. Is Rod not a cool name? It's pretty cool. <laughs> They're in school. Um, what the fuck is that note? This is Glenn's tape. Uh, you remember this? Oh, um, when they're they're at the sleepover. Oh, the tape he's playing in the stereo. I'm thinking a VHS tape. Yeah, okay, yeah, because they're having a little sleepover, a little slumber party over at Tina House, and they're not supposed to. So he told his parents like he was somewhere at his his friend's house that lived by the airport. Mm, yeah. He's playing little air, fake airport sound effects in the background, but then the tape fucked up. Yeah. It was like I don't know, it was like a gun, like a drive by or some shit happened on the tape. What the fuck tape? Yeah, he started screaming and shit. Yeah, he started like explosion, like a fucking war was going on. I thought yeah. she was about to start popping off right there. It but should. It, Tina's scared to be, sleep by herself, so that's why they decided to. Uh, st- uh, they uh, she asked them to stay with her. Hmm. My next note was phone fuckery. Remember this? Um, this is after the dude popped out and scared him? Mm-hmm. That, so, yeah. No, nope. That's before that. Okay. So. That's probably kind of... That's probably what I was just talking about. I just don't remember the notes no more. Yeah. But my next note is that there's a, they hear noises outside. Mm-hmm. And so they the girls hide behind Glenn. They make his ass go look. <laughs> and when the coast, he thinks the coast is clear... The homie Rod sneaks up on his ass, puts him in a headlock, all that good shit. Mm-hmm. And at first they're gonna leave, but then Tina's like, "Hey, you know, don't leave me with this motherfucker." So they get the pleasure of having to listen to Tina get the pleasure because she's getting pushed in, bro. Yeah, and not being quiet about it. So Glenn, yeah. Glenn was like, "Hey, since they gonna go fuck, hey Nancy, why don't we go fuck?" And she's like, "No, we're here Denied. for them." We're nice. No, it's not about us no more. It's for them. So now he gets to sit there and listen to Tina get fucked yeah. while the balls become sub zero color blue. Yeah. Yes. The yeah, blue ball to oblivion. Yeah, that was rough. But what happens next, Cameron? Dude was up there getting a little bit of pussy. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit of pussy. A little bit of pussy. Um They fall asleep after they fuck. Yeah, as one does. <laughs> I mean, they but they they Knockouts, be- you lose. <laughs> they beast Ring fucking. Everybody uh, get that reference. They beast fucking. Mr. Wongberger over here. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lynn. The party don't stop. Mr. Wongberger. <laughs> you don't know that, go watch it. That's why we Bre- with Bret Hart out here in these streets, we make them tap outs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, them niggas fell asleep. And um, I guess the chick starts getting... I guess she gets into her little well, Freddy. She's hearing room. like shit hitting the window. Yeah, I thought somebody was shooting at her, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> what was he like? It's like pebbles hitting like the window. Like throwing rocks at her. Rocks at she investigates the window, like, you know, they do. <laughs> and <laughs> they, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Is this when the cuz came out the wall? Started yeah, because at the same time, she's like investigating Nancy. Apparently, he's also falling asleep. And as she's laying in bed, do you see the, oh, the crucifix actually got knocked off the wall first. And it was laying on her bed with her. And then you see Freddie trying to come through the wall. You just see his, his, like, his fingers out and his face outstretched through the wall. Yeah. One of the more famous shots from the movie that everybody loves talking about. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a definitely they kind of redo it in the multiple other movies where he kind of stretches out. That's how they did it again in this movie when he came out to bed at the end, he kind of like stretches oh, out. Stretch out. <laughs> stretch out. <laughs> so yeah, but um I think she wakes up and so he slings back into the wall and she yeah. like, puts the crucifix back up on the wall. So he, he's like, all right, well she away, let's go back and fuck with Tina. Yeah. And what happens with Tina Cameron? Jesus Christ. Um <laughs> Remember. I'm getting there. What, what happened to Tina? Ali. Who? Ali. Our With backyard. Oh, they said Ali, like. 
What? Ali. Ali. What the hell's Ali. going on? Ali. But yeah. She, how did she get to the alley first? I remember the alley. Well, she steps out the backyard through a gate in the backyard, and then there's like the little alley but in the back. Yeah, because this was my anxiety. My So throughout the movie... <laughs> What was that? What's that shit on Breakfast Club? They get pissed off meter. Yeah, yeah. I well, guess. Brent can add an anxiety meter, <laughs> and right now, if you go from green to red, I'm like, I'm like low. I'm like high green right now. It's like <laughs> high lime, green. It's like lime green, slowly merging into yellow. Okay. And I knew it was. I knew something was going to happen. I wasn't expecting jump scares yet. Mm-hmm. But I knew at some point they it's were going to have to. one minutes. We got to get to him quick. They had to show him at some point. Yep. And when he came out the wall, or well, was starting to, I was expecting the jump scare. So my anxiety, I knew he was coming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I knew he was arriving. <laughs> but I didn't know how. And then when he came out the wall, okay, cool. They showed him already. We've got over the first hump of conquering this movie. I see him now. <laughs> I see you. So, now that they're showing her, she's in the backyard. I kept referring this movie back to Halloween. Oh, yeah. I see backyard. Okay, he's clearly behind some damn blanket or something hanging up. He's not. So now, anxiety is in the yellow. Because <laughs> I I was clear I was trying to be tough I know where the fuck he's at Just like Fucking Michael Myers You know what I mean You know some wind's gonna slightly blow and You're in yellow color You know he's going to be Standing there And whatever I'm expecting it Ain't gonna bother me He's not there Okay where the fuck is he <laughs> But If my anxiety goes down Because they don't really do Nothing too crazy right here They show him not yet. No. And he's just got big, long, goofy ass looking arms. And that's what helped me. I'm goofiest looking arms. I'm like, oh, okay. It, it's supposed to be funny right here. This movie ain't going to be. It's supposed to be funny. This, uh, <laughs> it was, though. I said, this movie ain't going to be shit. So I went into my. If you can see this video, my, my hoodie was like this. <laughs> Zipped all the way up on my. Now I'm right here. I'm cool. Whatever. Fuck this dude. But he's walking. I have to say, too, his arms are like that. He's got them long like that because he's supposed to be like using his nails to scratch both sides of the brick walls as he walks by to like intimidate, make that little scratchy noise and shit. And I will say, I knew what was happening. If you refer back to a show, a lot of people don't remember called I Love the 80s. Mm. When they talked about Freddy Krueger and I was sitting with Brent and my grandmother, <laughs> they showed that scene of him coming through the alley. Oh, uh, this is familiar. I'm cool. I've seen this. Whatever, we good. So he chases her, and they get to rolling around while she's trying to go through the back door, right? Trying to get people to. Oh, wait. before that, he does it. He, he like fucks with her a little bit because she's like, oh, he cuts his fingers, right? He's like, oh God, and he puts his glove. He says, like, this is God. Yeah, and then he slices his little pinky or something. Yeah, then right? after he says that, that's when he he chases her down. The, he's like all goofy with his arms out stretched, chasing her down the alleyway, and then she gets yeah. back to the backyard. And then uh, she's like knocking on the door, and he like steps from behind a tree. You finally get him from behind a tree, and then that's when he says, "Hey, he's like, watch this, watch this." And that's when he chops his fingers off, and you and can it, see the blood <laughs> squirt out of him. I will say, I made this reference to Brent. I know things are happening. Things are about to pop off when they start showing people in trees. Every slasher movie, <laughs> there's a scene where the fucker is behind a tree. Jason, and, do it. Mike Jason, Myers do it? Yes. Yeah. Freddy do it? Yeah. Jason yeets people in and out of trees. Well, I'm about to say the Evil Dead is pretty much all trees. Yeah, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Evil Dead is trees. And Jason the is all... trees fucking J- get raped for somebody in that movie. Jason's all much. trees. Michael Myers doesn't really do trees, but he hides behind bushes. Nature. Nature and slashers. There you go. Yeah. Because Leprechaun, even in that movie... He was inside of a tree. I was about to say his fortress was a tree. The, in Scream movies, he did. He had a scene where he was behind a tree. I'm trying to think if oh my my man Norman did anything with trees, but he was I using a swamp. If you want to use that as nature, he nature was throwing people into a swamp out there. So for all you fuckers out there that think nature is great, nature's not. Damn Na- nature. Damn, Damn nature. You, you scary. scary. <laughs> that some bitch come my house, I kill him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they. He slices fingers, being weird. He kind of gives it a little eyebrow raise, weird 
smile look mm -hmm. thing that he's been doing the whole movie. Um, they get the wrestling around by the door yep. because for some reason he has a thing for rolling around. Yeah. Everybody he encounters, they like have some tussle, motherfucker. They have some tussle. scene where they tussle, tussle and tussle. they do the whole like, I'm on top now, I'm on top thing. And they roll around until somebody becomes dominant. I don't know why he continued like to do they, that. Like the WF fans, it's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like the '80s. That's shit popular. No, he likes it. He likes to make it look like he's um when the kids run in, he's like, "We're we'll just play wrestling." You that know? was a very sick reference. <laughs> 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 That was the sickest thing ever in my life. Chris, you're a sick man. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to protect the kiddos from seeing anything. There you go. <laughs> they tussle. While they're tussling, though, what happened? She tussling. pulls a John Woo on his ass. She pulls his face off. Oh, yeah, and he turns face. to like a, like, he looks like a skeleton. Oh. Yeah, right? yeah. And he laughs, and I think this is when bro wakes up. Yeah, yeah, because she's like bugging out in the bed. Because it's like she, she sleep in the bed. So he just see her tossing and screaming, don't know what's going on. And he pulls the blankets off of her. He see her chest get ripped the fuck open. I didn't like that part because when the way he had looked at her, he pulls the blanket up. Yeah. She's by his feet. Mm -hmm. You didn't feel this bitch roll across your body? Man, look, we tired. We did a lot of fucking. I'm exhausted. I need a power nap. I ain't paying that shit no attention. Girls love rubbing their feet on you in the middle of the night anyways. Man, my feet are cold. So maybe that's what you thought. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> so he pulls it black. <laughs> I said black anyway. Morning, morning. We need to start over. He pulls it <laughs> He pulls it black. Pulls it black. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she's going to do when he leaves. <laughs> She'll call Tyrone. That's Go right. Call him. Yeah. Come get your shit. <laughs> but yeah, then she she gets her chest cut open. Then what he like she raises up to like the roof and shit, right? He's like, kinda getting the roof. <laughs> she kinda getting thrown around the fucking room, like corner of the room. Yeah, yeah. He's like throwing her all the she's like sliding around the room and then she ends up on the ceiling and yeah, she's like I forget what exactly happened. She like down there explodes full of blood or some shit. Yeah, and then she just like falls to the ground. Oh, that's what it is. When she falls to the bed, it like splatters blood everywhere. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah and bro's just freaking the fuck out. Dana. He was pretty useless because he got up and just looked at her like, because her chest wouldn't even cut when he initially got up. Mm -mm. And he just like stares at her until she gets fucking sliced. Like, you're not you're gonna... laying in bed with a girl and she's tossing, turning, screaming and shit like that. What do you do? Bitch, get out. Fuck <laughs> 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 <Like> you, bitch. <mean? laughs> you can get the fuck out the bed and wake her up. Peace. Bitch, <laughs> bounce. Shake your ass. Yeah, what... Shake your ass. Yeah, Shake your ass. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. <laughs> so. That happens. Yeah, she dead as fuck. And then, bro, then he he, got he, the he jumped out the window. He banged. Yeah, they came. They, the other two was trying to get into the room. Glenn and Nancy got in there. Yeah, G and N was trying to get in there. This is G and N. <laughs> and Cuz jumped out the window. <laughs> and I don't know. I remember it was like police showed up. And Second shit, of movie course. in a row where somebody in the beginning of the movie jumps out a window. That's very true. <laughs> Jumping out the window. <laughs> <laughs> That's fire. <laughs> so yeah, so he's dead and he ran off. Lieutenant Thompson, John Saxon, who's Nancy's dad, comes in there and is well, they they're at the police station. He comes in there because you find you, they don't really get into it. They don't say a lot, but you and from inference, you see that the mom and dad aren't together anymore because he comes in there and he's like, "Why the fuck did you let her do this?" And the dad wasn't at the house, so they're not together anymore. So mama got custody of that child. What was that? Some ice phone vibrated. That's not an iPhone vibrate. Oh, that Christopher? Would you like to share with the class? It's nothing. It's literally just, e just random email. Oh, okay. I put mine on D and D. Put them porn hub notifications on silent, Chris. Actually, I don't have those. I, I, <laughs> I why would I sign why would I sign up for shit when I could just watch it for free? Because you might want to save the videos for later. I do that already anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Bookmarks, baby. Exactly. So, yes, the parents are squabbling about because he's mad that his daughter was even out at that house anyway. But they're like, hey, go home, go take a nap, go see a movie, kids. <laughs> Don't worry about it too much. But. Don't worry about it the, too much. <laughs> exactly. When she wakes up the next day, Cameron. 
They tell her not to go to school, but she going anyway. And as she's walking to school camera, what happens to her? Somebody told me to deliver this message. Mm -hmm. Rod grabs hold of her and pulls her into the bushes. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and dad was following her and shit. Well, you don't know that, yeah, because he's talking to her and he's like, yo, I didn't kill Tina. She's like, I know. And as he goes ahead, hey, well, he gets mad because she said, ask him something, he snaps at her. And then when he snaps at her, you hear, because dad comes up behind him and was like, yes, yeah, get up real slow, nigga. So he basically used his daughter as bait to get lured that motherfucker out because he probably knew eventually that he was going to try and talk to her. It was a sting. He's like, Basically, he laid out like, I didn't even want you to fucking go to school in the first Why place. Why would you go to school in the first place, dumbass? But she's still going to school anyways. Mm-hmm. She's like, You're... get out of my life, dad. I got to live, dad. Stop bothering me, dad. <laughs> so she goes to school and he gets arrested. It's fine. In the classroom, Cameron's first thing he pointed out was that they got the one black student in the classroom mm-hmm. with the afro mm-hmm. and the Harry Potter glasses. Mm-hmm. So he called it, we call it Negro Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Blotter. He did. <laughs> Barry Burton. Very. <laughs> he did not have a shotgun. I got a shotgun. You, he should have had a shotgun. I said a lot of cats in this movie should have shotguns. Well, I didn't work with Michael Myers. They all shotgunned him at the end of part, what, four? And then he came back in part five like it was nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was that four or five? Um, when he got shotgunned by the police at the end, they like shot I him over the want to say it was four. Uh, he came back in five and tried to kill the little girl. It was four. Even if a, even in the first one, the nigga hit him with a gun this damn long. He with that dirty Harry <laughs> into a fucking. Then that nigga fell back first and got up. Well, hell, in the second movie, he got like burned alive <laughs> and blown up in a hospital. And then he died, true. but then Halloween 3 came out and nobody liked it, so then they had to resurrect him for some reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Halloween 3 is the shit, though. I don't care what nobody says. They didn't have him in there, did Not at all. It was an anthology series. They was going to spin it off and yeah. do something different every time, and then people didn't like, where's Michael Myers? He's fucking dead. I remember that. That's where he at. That's now people he... be like, oh, those other Halloween movies suck. What's well, your fucking fault? God yeah. damn it. Yeah, you should have opened yourself up to something new. Little bitty bitches. Yeah, shut up, bitch. Yeah, that's right. Shut I, up, bitch. <laughs> Open your mind. I rule you. <laughs> 401k, bitch. 401k. <laughs> Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch Aqua Teen if you don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. So they're in the classroom. Yep. Little bitch. She tired. Yeah, she's, like motherf- she's motherfucking tired. You know, bitch been up all night. Fighting for her life. <laughs> Fighting for her life. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so, she pulled a typical Cameron move and go to sleep during class. Ah, that's a Cameron and Brent move. I've done that several times. I have to? There, there it is. Goes. Failures. Especially, <laughs> Anyways. Especially when you already get AIDS in class. So. I did not have AIDS. I thought this nigga said especially when you get AIDS in class. I don't, have, I don't have that either. <laughs> hey, Roger, no, you said, no I got not AIDS. that. No, 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 no. Yeah, no I, I said, what? I didn't have AIDS. I was satisfied <laughs> with a C. That would be two for me. C's got degrees. That's right. It's true. It's true. So, give me C's or you can suck on these. Yeah, suck <laughs> on these, bitch. <laughs> so, the bitch falls asleep. Yes. Um, damn, what happened? She sees her friend Tina, but in a yeah. body, bloody body bag. And she's they keep calling her name. She looks over. For some reason, after they have this weird exchange of her wanting, giving a fuck about where her friend is as a dead person, she goes into the hallway. Well, she's following her because the body bag got pulled away. Yeah, and this <laughs> blood trail, of course, and she's following it, and then she gets to the end of the hallway, and I don't remember after that. I don't she remember her. to the hall monitor at first. First, she gets to the end of the hallway. And then, yeah, and it's it, it, it's suspicious looking hall monitor. Yeah, she has on that red and green sweater because mm-hmm. that striped sweater. That was a, <laughs> the best time to wear a striped sweater. <laughs> it's all the time. There you go. <laughs> More SpongeBob references you didn't expect, probably. <laughs> but we are yeah. children of the '90s, folks. I thought you were gonna say children of the corn. You can watch God, that. I know. I've never seen any of those. I have, and I, I have don't not. ever want to see that again. It, well, that might be almost as bad as this movie. Yes, Malachi. <laughs> oh I know God. parts of it. I just never watched that. Yeah, no, I know some. I know it's got I know Sarah Connor in there. That movie was disturbing because of where we lived. 
Oh, yeah. I have to go past cornfields to get to school. I have to go past cornfields to get anywhere. That's right. Don't like it. Surrender. Anyways, <laughs> she bumps into the hall monitor, bitch. The bitch got a red and green. Where's your hall pass? Fuck your hall pass. Yeah, she's pretty like, man, bitch, eat a dick. And then she turns around trying to be tough. And the motherfucker is him or her. Her is him. See you soon, Nancy. Whatever the fuck it says. He did say that. Oh, there you go. And he does that whole weird creepy smile shit again. Mm-hmm. This, this is crooked smile. It's like an occurring. <laughs> crooked nigga. <laughs> crooked nigga. <laughs> like you mean crooked nigga. Uh, um, yeah. So she sees that. What happens? What makes her scream and wake up? I remember her. Well, she gets up. chased into that boiler room and she gets cornered. She traps herself around a corner where there's nowhere to leave. Oh, yeah. She was sitting against the wall and crazy. Ain't that where she got burnt, right? Her That's arm. how she woke herself up. Mm-hmm. She gets burned. She touched a, I guess, she put steamy her pipe. Steam, steamy. Steam, steamy. Steam pipe. Steamy. Steamy. <laughs> yes. Come to Papa. <laughs> Or SpongeBob. <laughs> but yeah, that's how she woke herself. She burned. And that's when they that's when you find out shits are getting real. Because when she wakes up in the classroom, she got that burn on her arm in real life. Yeah. So she getting clues of what's happening in She the- wakes up and my man's in front of her looks back like bitch. The what black the dude? F- what the fuck are you screaming? <laughs> First of all, bitch, stop screaming behind me. And why are you tweaking <laughs> during class? Tweaking. Bitch? <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. He was in a hostile environment. That's right. I felt more. I fear for my life. I felt more sorry for him than anybody in the movie. He should not have been there. Well, he is not there. He won't see him ever again. He said, "Can we move to another state?" (laughs) With pleasure. (laughs) (laughs) With perspiration. There we go. So, she wakes up. She screams. I forget what the teacher said to her. She's like, "You're gonna need a hall pass." Yeah, and they kind of. Get that little like Russell Westbrook bit. What? I'm out of here, y'all niggas tripping. Yeah, yeah she but she decided to go home. <laughs> yep. Well, she goes to visit Rod in jail. Oh yeah, Rod. Yeah. yeah. And that's when you find out that they both were dreaming about the same person. Yeah, they kept saying a guy with knives for fingers. Yeah. It was the like the tie into everybody's dreams. I want. I think they said ugly sweater. They. I don't remember them describing it, but they just kept saying. I, don't I think they said they said dirt. Dirty sweater. I remember the hat, yeah. dirty sweater, and knives for fingers. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so, after all this stress, she goes home, and she's taking her little bubble bath camera. She's taking a bath, and um, look like she's dozing off. Freddie's mm-hmm. hand comes up through the bath water, and right in between them legs. R- right by the coochie. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> One of them blades could have went right there. That water was a little, a little dingy. <laughs> I mean, that, that little pussy was a little funky. That should be a stress. Ain't no time for bathing. Pussy was a little funky like a little billy goat. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Like a billy goat. Hey, Billy. <laughs> billy, she, Billy. Right before she got the goat bucked her. <laughs> Don't fuck me. Bucked her clothes, obviously. What's the name of that damn video? <laughs> billy Goat. Because we say it all the time. I don't think I've ever played it. Just put Billy Goat. Yes, sir. I don't see it. I'll send it to you. The link. Steamy. <laughs> That's stuck in my head. Steamy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, see, literally, Billy Goat. You know, I said, don't you say them cat yeah, Billy kill and kill him I'll and cook, cook him. him. <laughs> hey, boy, where Billy there? Hey, it's move a video of goats going around fucking people that jumped there. over it. Eh? I don't know what Billy is. How much Billy is that, but I said, where Billy there? I'm begging you, look. I'm gonna bring him down and kill him and cook him. Mary, <laughs> Mary, don't go over there, so I'll buy you nothing. Know. Don't go nothing. over there, so you know, you know, say I build it myself. Me not buy nothing. <laughs> you know, I say over there, I go, go buy <laughs> curry goat. Me say, me not going over there, go buy nothing. Over there, I go, you know. Me say, move from here, so boy. Me not going over there. Meanwhile, in a goat attacks a curry goat restaurant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. Oh, there you go. Yeah, look. I'm. Right, Grandessa. 
He grab back me. He grab back me. So, so what happened? <laughs> not, not, not. I'm going to me. grab back my beans. And, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's right as him back me. Me, me tell you how that he goes. Say, me now he go, he go, you know. And then, uh, and he's still a girl harass me, but say, right now, yes, sir. If I have a whole lot of dirty go to see, right, I'm going to tell you. And then, we are starting there. Yeah. Uh, so, no, no, what do you say now? Right, we're going to say, but me, right, look. And don't take my clothes. Oh, I forgot about the bike. Yeah. Where did you oh, come from? Yeah. Mom, go out. I'm going to go out. No, hey, please. Go, go, no, go, 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 Oi, please don't do me nothing, Marcy. Marcy, <laughs> come here, man. Oi, come here. Yo, come here. Where are you now, go? Wait till I hold you here. Marcy, that's cool, no, Marcy? Yo, please, come here. Marcy. <laughs> yeah. Yo, please, Marcy. Back my class. Yeah, the back my class. <laughs> when I bring him down, I kill him. <laughs> cook him. I cook him. <laughs> he said, yeah, Marcy. <laughs> I don't even remember writing the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I got bucked. My skulls got bucked. Um, oh, bubble bath. Bubble bath. Yeah. Yeah. So the hand comes up. Buck my bath. Anxiety levels <laughs> in the in the in the yellows oh, right it's now. In the yellow. Okay. We're like <clears throat> we're like yellow orangeish now. Mm. We're we're almost red, but we're not there yet. Not this time. <laughs> not this time. Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> totally made it. <laughs> Pure fiction. <laughs> Much beyond belief. Hundred percent fabricated. <laughs> so. The hand goes away because mama starts knocking on the door. And yeah, mama woke her up. Then when mama knocks on the door, hand goes away. It goes back in the water. Don't know how she didn't see it. It was quick. Whatever. Pretty fast. <laughs> Freddy's dead. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yeah, there you go. That's you your know, song. Funny enough, that's the name of the sixth movie is Freddy's Dead. The final name. The final name. Is the song played? Nope, it should though. It wouldn't have surprised me if they played it. That movie goofy as fuck. But we'll get to that one at some point. I, I will say real quick the about this movie. Mm-hmm. This movie was made in 84. Yes. Does Will Smith song play on any of these movies? No. Kumo D does, though. I remember that. Yeah. The I Got Him song. What was it? Want me to get him? Well, I got him. <laughs> song called Let's Go. That's so stupid. I think it plays at the end of Freddy's Dead. That's what I'm saying. That's, you gotta watch that one. So but why the fuck would... Or is it that one? Will Smith not play? Because they, I don't know. What He's is literally. Like, what's talk- the reason why that video never got released? Because they never had the rights to use uh, it and shit. So that's probably, that's probably they use to try to use voice and shit. Mm-hmm. Had a fake Freddie voice shit. Because he literally the the song is describing his first movie. Yeah, that's exactly what's talking about. I noticed that now. On my street. You know that song? Yeah, I, it's been forever since I heard it though. It's a great song. Nightmare on my street. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great song. His name is Fred. Anyways, yeah. uh, I forgot where I was. Bathtub. Sorry, I've been drinking a lot. I've been drinking. Surfboard. Surfboard. <laughs> Surfboard. <laughs> Bathtub. She mom goes away. She pretty much mom get the fuck out of here. I made you some warm milk. Yes, yeah, warm milk. Like. <laughs> Have you ever had warm milk? I have. I've never done that before. I've never had I've warm. Heard of it. I never had warm milk, a just like cup of milk though. I always use hot milk for my uh, hot cocoa. I don't use. Oh, milk. okay. You know, I like use a cold, hot, like bleh, a cup of hot milk to go to bed. I tried it; it didn't work. It actually made my stomach hurt. Oh wow! But we're lactose family, so <laughs> the yeah. warm milk does not <laughs> work. We don't fuck with them cows. <laughs> you fuck with them heifers. Yeah, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna feed me jack off drink, juice. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, drinking a warm glass of milk before bedtime is a long standing tradition and for good reason. There are several sleep promoting nutrients in milk, such as tryptophan, magnesium, and melatonin. These components of milk increase melatonin production and relax nerve and muscles. So that's why they know that. Because they mm-hmm. inject melatonin so and shit. Melatonin and that shit that's in turkey, that tryptophan shit, too. Turkey? Yeah, that's why you say a lot of times you eat on Thanksgiving, you get sleepy after you eat all that turkey. It's got that trick to find in there. I don't know. I'm sick of hearing about turkeys. Well, 
you got about to go few to more casino. months. Hey, yeah, you about to get yeah, to I go home and eat turkey every day. Well, <laughs> you're going to in time, you'll have more. more. They get ham too, I guess. You get some of that ham bone. I eat mac and cheese and mashed potatoes. And ham bone. Ham bone. I want no, <laughs> want no fuck, swine. Fuck up in the corner and heat it back. Ham bone. As I always say ham bone. Years ago, my grandma had bought some ham. Ham. And it had the bone in there. It looked like the butthole or some shit. Mm-hmm. And it said butt portion. It did. <laughs> it's the like, one that was in the freezer. Yeah. But, that was, I was like, yeah, here eating that ham bone. <laughs> <laughs> ham. We loved ham. I love ham. Ham. Go we'll play Mortal Kombat Deception. Great movie. <laughs> uh, I mean, Mortal Kombat is a great movie. Uh, what's it called? Video game. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, the second time the little baby falls asleep in in the uh, um, the bathtub, and I guess Freddy pulls her in. in He's trying a, to drown her. He doing a, some get out shit. Yeah, she goes into like. The pool or some shit. <laughs> like it looks like she's in the bottom of a pool. Yeah, so it looks like get out when your boy went to the little sucking, yeah. sucking, sunken place, not the sucking place. Yeah, that's her. She took Johnny Depp earlier. <laughs> no, Johnny Depp wishes that's where he went earlier. Remember, he got blue balled. Oh, that's right. That nigga was white. I broke my back, <laughs> spinal. <laughs> well, eventually the motherfucker did go to the sunken place. No, he did actually. You're right. he was getting hit Ooh. himself, buddy. Ooh. But yeah, so he's trying to drown her. Yeah, and then uh, Mama hears her been there panicking. Mama said, <laughs> "Let's hear what Mama got to say." <laughs> you will mama, later. Mama said, "Mama, mama, mama said." <laughs> so Mama comes back <laughs> to the door. And she's banging on the door. She's trying to uh, lock, pick lock. Did she, she actually she did it? The lock with she, the co hanger. Yeah. Co hanger. Yeah. She she pretty much breaks in. And um, what would you do as parents? Mm-hmm. Are the kids allowed to lock the bathroom door where they take baths? As a parent, you are not allowed to lock, lock any doors in my house. Period. No, oh, there you go. <laughs> if you do, I'll kick your shit down. The camera got two kids, so he's the resident parent here. For you out there, if my kid locks the door. And I can't get in. Not only will I remove your door. <laughs> That's the old school shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I will take your door from you and put it somewhere, and you will have no door. Whole door. You'll have the bathroom door. <laughs> More door. door. More door. You, <laughs> I will the door will be the over door. there. <laughs> I will hold the door. You have no door. I mean, this isn't. He's saying this to a person that had a padlock on his door for years. To keep you motherfuckers out. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. At a certain age, it's like, whatever. I installed mine when nobody was home. Motherfuckers just came home and found out one day. Yeah, hey, I actually sh- thought that was hilarious because mom was pissed. <laughs> that was one of those moments where, like, mom had nobody to, like, vent to about, so she vented to me about it. I'm like, fuck you telling me for? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, we're going in this nigga's room. <laughs> Like, what do you, what you want me to do about it? You want me to go tell him to take it off? He going to look at me like, nigga, fuck you. <laughs> I thought it was funny. So, I'm like, shit, that was actually fucking clever. I lived with my dad. He lived with my mom. If I could have did that in my dad's house, I would have. But it would have, that would have just, oof. He would have been the petty one to, like, do some stupid shit or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah. Good times. Yeah, it was funny. I'm like, <laughs> You want me to say, you're not going to be able to get in there either. Like, That's the point. I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even be here. <laughs> like, Why would I want you? <laughs> like, well, that was funny because all the doors in that house were fucked. All the doors were fucked. Like, all of them, the locks broke at some point. We had to break in them. And so none of the doors locked. So you could just, like, you could push on it with your index finger and it would just fly over. Yeah. I mean, like I told my, I understand why he's doing it. Like, I wouldn't want you in my room neither. Yeah. Because it was one of those things where our parents felt like it was necessary to go in our shit and look yeah. through our and shit. Throw away my Pokemon cards, mom. That are you know, our worst. She don't remember no more. Mm-hmm. She definitely threw it away because it was a <laughs> fucking binder. It was a full red, of them. It was a red Pokedex thing. And it was in the little room closet for years. Mm-hmm. And I know she threw it away because she's the only person that cleans that <laughs> shit like that. None of us would have threw stuff like that away. We hoard our shit. That's right. And now, thanks to Cynthia, <laughs> she threw away 
Probably millions of dollars. <laughs> I, I had one Poke card, Mogemon card in there that was worth ten thousand dollars alone, just one. And I had I had all the original one hundred and fifty one. I had holographics and I had the Japanese ones that had the Japanese lettering there. I had all that shit. Yeah, cause dad threw mine. I had a couple at dad's house. He threw them away because they were quote unquote evil. Ah, uh, they were pocket monsters. They I were had devil. I had a hollow. This nigga lived in the water boy house. I had a holographic <laughs> Pikachu Japanese one that's probably worth a ton of money. And I also had all the original Burger King gold ones. I had those two, yeah. I had the I had the one that you got for going to go see the movie. Yeah, and they fucked us, my boy, and just threw away millions of dollars. Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> Could have got a new house. Now you don't. Wouldn't have been asking for no money. We'd have had it already. Exactly. <laughs> so spend this twenty dollars. That's right. Right now. <laughs> I'm, I demand it. Uh -huh. Expeditiously. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> But, yeah, mom comes in, wakes the chick. Well, she woke up before well, woke mom up, actually yeah, came in there because yeah. mom was beating on the door when mom like crazy. She came in there, she's like, hey, I'm sorry for scaring you, mom. And she tried yeah. to play that shit off. So, after that, I don't remember what happens. Well, she, she locks the door. After the mom leaves, she shuts the door and locks it back. And then she reaches into the cupboard and gets some stay awake pills. Yeah, because I kept saying, why aren't they even doing that? I will point out in the old in, in the new movie when I seen it in the movie the theater remake. the remake yeah. they showed the pills mm -hmm. but they actually showed the chick get them from Walgreens Oh it was a whole scene for that huh They actually mm -hmm. were in the pharmacy oh. when they bought them because I was expecting a scene there was a scene where she pulls the pills off the thing and he reaches out at her Oh he grabbed at her cuz she kept like dozing off as she was walking after a while, they just they, they the storage man had the uh, the pills. What were they called? I remember that yeah. Hypnos, Hypnosil. Thank you. I was like, there was a fucking name for them. Yeah. Hypnosil. Yeah. So I was ex I didn't expect her to already have the pills. Mm -hmm. I was expecting them to do the pharmacy scene. That was... No, nope. like hey, we got pills. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. She's a kid. She might need to stay awake and study, so she got stay awake pills. That besides the origin story of him, that was the only two scenes that were different. Really? I. I... I saw it once and it bored me to sleep, so I don't remember it very Just much. Just the they they started off with how he got to where he was, mm -hmm. and then the pharmacy thing. Everything else they was made sick. him a Chester in the remake too, didn't they? A molester. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know in this one they call they just well, in this movie I, uh, later on they expand upon shit, but in this movie, as far as we know, he's just a child killer. That's all they say. Yeah, from from day from the beginning of the movie, they immediately. Acknowledge that he is a Chester. Mm, mm -hmm. a pedo. Because that's where they got that line, Cougar, you're a sick man. Yeah. And then they burned down. He was inside of a fucking like elementary school uh boiler yeah. room basement. Boiler room, yeah. yeah. And they did they burn him in the boiler room in the new one? Yeah. I think he went he he was yeah. in the boiler room and he left and went to like a little barn and a shack. Looked like one of those old so, elementary rooms, I in thought. The, in the old in the, yeah, in the this in this really classic went. one, he's he's in his he's uh in his house in the bo in a, on a in boiler the basement. room. In his basement in a boiler room. In the new one, he's in the elementary school boiler room. Gotcha. And yeah, and they burned him down with the before they Molotov him is the whole <laughs> cougar because they didn't do the whole Didn't they we, beat him up? I thought they jumped him and then burned him up and everything. They they kicked his ass a little bit yeah. and he ran mm -hmm. and they chased him and he went to the yeah the elementary. He had keys to get in there. He's trying he got to hide. the keys. Yeah, because he was an elementary school janitor, I think. Yeah, and those damn custodians. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't do the like what later we find out the whole left of like uh, line of gasoline. Mm -hmm. I, they molotov him. Oh, they just firebombed him. They just bombed him. That's oh. more. I mean, I guess that's more efficient. So trying to sneak around and pour out gas, just start bombing his ass with bottles. Yeah, I was surprised bomb, I bomb. didn't see that, and I was surprised I didn't see the pharmacy thing. Because honestly, I will say in the new movie, the pharmacy scene was the only part that actually scared me in the movie. Mm. Other than that, I didn't really care for the new one. I watched the whole thing. It didn't bother me. He didn't look scary. Well, that's the thing. I said when I, when I back when that came out, when you told me you went and saw it at the theater and you actually watched the whole movie, I knew it sucked then. Yeah, me and you Ari could sit through that, knowing how you are with Freddy. Yeah, me and Ari went to go see it <clears throat> at Easton. I I think I caught it on DVD later on. I watched that shit on bootleg. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. It was Years pretty after the fact. It was pretty lame. It sucked. 
Mm-hmm. It was pretty lame. Did I give it a score on IMDb? That was around the time I was raking shit. Let me see. Let's see if I did or not. There's New Nightmare. Oh, I gave it a 3 out of 10. There you go. It's probably higher than I thought it was going to be. So, yeah, she's trying to stay awake. Oh. It's a wrap. Oh, no. It's a wrap. That's it. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. Oof. We'll get to, we'll show you the actors. Yeah, that's, but, that's um, bad. Who? Yeah, so. Hey, you're gone. Oh, yeah. So gone. <laughs> <laughs> Hit the road, Jack. Don't, Don't you come, come back, back no more, no more, no more, no more. No more. Hit the road, Jack. Jack. Don't you come back no more. Ooh. Oh, that it, uh, my um my trip to uh LA, we were at oh, Universal yeah, Studios that, Hollywood. <laughs> he was doing that with I had to, th- I had to I think about this fucking guy. With the <laughs> and LA. That and they had to, 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 to generate the thought. And they had they had um I went on the Universal Studios tour there in, Oh the uh, little ride. Right. See Norman yeah. Bates. Uh yeah no yeah yeah there was some the stuff there there was, there was a bait there was a yeah we, it was a studio tour and they kept playing that in um in the beginning they played uh the so, Ray they played a little bit of everything on there on that first reel and then at, mm-hmm. uh, then this the tour was like uh, for uh, like fifty minutes or something like mm-hmm. that oh it yeah was, it was the first time I ever actually liked the tour oh yeah yeah I, when I went to LA I did I got on there too so I was telling you that was the hypest part was riding by the actual Bates Motel and then they had to do dress like Norman come out mm-hmm. there with the body and shit. Did he do that when he was there? No. Uh, oh, that only, sucks. Only thing we got was um, the stuff from uh, like there was a Fast and the Furious thing at the end. That and King Kong, right? Yeah. Yeah, they had those when I was there too. But now when you when you <clears throat> drove past, when they went past like the Alfred Hitchcock area and all that, they had the base motel set, and then we actually had there was a dude oh, that looked just like ch- that. They nigga changed that to um, to Nope. Oh, they did build a Nope area. That's right. I heard about that. Mm-hmm. That that's that that was just kind of blame a little bit. You know? What happened there? And they, and they just um, it was just kind of a little like it's little shaky bits here and there, but it wasn't really too much going on. Did they show? Have you seen Nope? I haven't really, but they oh, they, were, they went through like the either. they went through like the uh, like an amusement park thing from there. The little cowboy area. Yeah. shit? Oh, okay. That's all they did. Take well, I won't. Since you ain't seen it, I won't say nothing. Go watch it. You'll understand. Yeah. In time. In time. But yeah, Cameron. What was I saying? Where were we? we were, 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 oh, your boy took Glenn. The sleeping medicine. Yeah, yeah, Johnny Depp is at the window, or Glenn. <laughs> and she starts talking. She has a plan. She's like, "All right, nigga, I'm gonna go to sleep. So I want to bring back proof for this nigga. I just need you here to, you know, play guard and wake me up if I start to bug out." And he's like, "All right." So she goes to sleep, and she runs into Freddie, of course, like she wanted to, and she's running back to the house. And oh, and this is the part two, Cameron. I forget what you called it. She's trying to run up the stairs, but it's like quicksand or some shit on the steps. Marshmallow. Yeah, marshmallow. Marshmallow. You said called it marshmallow. That's right. But uh, she gets up into the bedroom, and they're, again, like Cameron said, they're tussling around. <laughs> but the alarm clock goes off, because Glenn is knocked the fuck out. He wasn't supposed to be sleeping, but he fell asleep anyway. So when she wakes up, she's pissed. She's like, you motherfucker. I, you had one job. You had one job. Oh, you had, wake me the fuck up. You dumb bastard. No coochie for you. Much. Yeah, he killed it. Pretty much, he he lost the bag. He did. Oh, and actually, I forgot to watch. She was dreaming. I forgot. That's where she uh she walked by the jail, and that's where she seen like he was in there fucking with Ra and Cameron like jumped because they showed Freddie. He just like walked through the bars and shit on some T one thousand. This okay, okay, yeah, I know where we at. Yeah, and then that's when she ran home and all that. But then she thought about it. She's like, oh shit! In the dream, he's about to kill Ra, so they run to the police station. Cameron, what happens? Well, first, this is where I, this goes back to my reference of slashers and trees. <laughs> she's she's looking for Freddy. She's walking down the sidewalk, mm-hmm. and uh, she asks like Glenn, you know, are you are you here? Like pretty much, mm-hmm. and Cuz peek around the tree like, yeah, I'm here. Oh, Johnny Depp, yeah, yeah. And then he disappears back behind the tree, and it looks exactly again, trees and murderers. Mm-hmm. But, don't trust the trees. Yeah, no, don't. stay away from trees. But they get to the police station. Bro asleep, and I thought this was supposed to be like Freddy's dick going in his mouth or something. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you did say that. I forgot. Yeah. Cause I it looked like a dick, and you know this movie's already been doing weird shit. Oh, it gets it gets weird down the line. I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy. Yeah, so it, <laughs> it was. I guess it was just you no know, him wrapped in the sheet, and he they wrapped it around his neck, and yep. He's pulling Cuz out the bed towards the wall, and 
pretty much hangs his cut hangs his nigga by, by the sheet he was using he was sleeping on mm-hmm. and that's pretty much it she's trying to she wanted to come to the police station to talk to the the cop in there, he's obviously got little dick syndrome because uh, he wasn't fucking with him. LDS. Yes. He, he, he suffers from a severe case of LDS. <laughs> 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 they wouldn't fucking with her. I think she, I guess she had, she thought she had more clout than no, she did. Because dad is the lieutenant her, or whatever. Yeah, because daddy got power. So she thought she was going to come in there and just make demands. And they pretty much like, bitch, eat a dick. Go fuck off. Go to sleep. Go see a movie. So while they're all having this swinging contest, you know, she's trying to convince them they need to go back there. They finally do it just to shut her the hell up. Yeah, they like, okay, come on, bitch. <laughs> Let's go, bitch. But it's, but and it's too little too late. That's yeah, right. they go back there and, and bro is, you know. You see him swing. Yeah, he's hanging downtown mm-hmm. contemplating. <laughs> he tried meditating and it didn't work. His back is broken. Hey, yeah. I broke my back. <laughs> Spinal. Yeah, so now they, they go to the jail cell and he's hanging out and um that's pretty much the end of that. And they made it look like he committed suicide too. Yeah. So Freddie can still fuck with him. Yeah, pretty much. And they immediately go to the funeral where he's super dead, if you didn't know it already. Mm-hmm. So the mom tells the dad, like, oh, he's like, man, look, you got to make sure she's good, man. She out here bugging out. She's like, look, I'm going to tell you, what, I'm going to go get her some help. I'm going to take her to Roger Rabbit over at the Sleep Institute. So I told her that dude playing the doctor did the voice of Roger Rabbit. If you didn't know, now you know. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Two for one special. <laughs> what happens, Cameron? what they call it? A sleeping... A sleep... Study sleep institute. Yeah, uh, so they're doing a sleep study on 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 uh, Nancy. Yeah, on, on N. <laughs> <laughs> the <N>. noggin, <laughs> naughty dog, <laughs> rated and developed. <laughs> so Nancy's not fucking with it, but she agrees to after a short little tussle of bitch. We're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so better enjoy because we're doing it anyway. <laughs> like Great. it's over. So. so she goes to sleep, and damn, what the fuck happened there? The dude is going over a bunch of little mumbo jumbo whatnot. He's like, all right, look, he know. He's like, okay, look, she's now she's now she's in deep sleep, and now you will see these numbers. If it goes anywhere to like plus or negative five or six or some shit, then we might have to pull her out. And is was she in the is boiler that, room again at this point? Yes, I'm pretty sure she was running around the boiler room because she falls asleep again. The numbers at three. But he's talking about the numbers will go up and down, but they don't change. They say on three, but the little fucking needle joint is going ape shit. Needle dick. Needle dick. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think they don't show where she's yeah, at. Yeah, they don't actually. show it this time. Yeah, they don't show anything. You just see her start twitching. It, yeah, she starts. See, the number goes from three to like 20 to 30. He's like, what? This doesn't make any sense. She starts tweaking and flipping ball sack. And <laughs> <laughs> they go in there and they wake this little hoe up. And <laughs> well, that young man, he pulled a needle out. He's about to dope the shit out of her. Yeah. To put her back to sleep. She's like, no. <laughs> no, don't go. Nick. Don't go. <laughs> but she her arm's been cut. Yeah, they see she got a slit on her arm, yeah. not the on the same arm with the burn. I think so. That arm's getting fucked up. Yeah, Mama starts tweaking because uh-huh. now she shit's real. She knows she, she got an I, idea. I guess Mom knew from the beginning shit was you know popping off and mm-hmm. shit was a little little different, but. Her body different. Yeah, her, her, th- her thinking different. Beat, you know what I'm saying? And, it, and she brought out some proof too. She brought out the hat. That's right. Yeah, when his hat out of the dream. Which remember, folks, because now that's showing that shit can be pulled from the dream into the real world, just like the cuts and bruises can also show up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that happens, and then they go home, right? Yep. She talks to her mom in the kitchen. Did you find out her mama done been hitting the bows again? And she's trying to hide it, but not doing a good job of it. Mm-mm. And she pulls out the hat and shows the mom. She's like, I know who it is. His hat, his name is even in that. And she's like, put the fucking hat away. Go to school. Fuck that. Don't still cry about it. You're going to die. And then she, you know, beefs with her mom. I think, she, is this where she throws her bottle on the ground? She yeah. slams her liquor yeah. bottle on the ground. Yeah. She's like, well, maybe if you wasn't so fucking drunk, mom, and throws her shit on the ground. And then later on, mom was like, you know what? I got this. I put extra locks on the doors and the windows got bars on them. Bars. And bars. she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, come on down to the boiler room or the basement. I got something to talk to you about. Which this part annoyed the fuck out of me. Let's go, Cameron. Mm. Get to the first of all, 
Don't tell me to meet you in no fucking basement when I've been fighting for my life for the last oh, 24 hours. Oh I'm literally neck, had to fight. running from yeah. a man who's trying to kill me. And the first place you want me to go to is the fucking basement. Absolutely right. the fuck next not. Next to the boiler. You. Next Whatever. to the fucking furnace. Furnace. That's the word I was looking for. We go down there <clears throat> and she's like, okay, I'm going to tell you everything. Cool. Mom about to, you know, open her fucking mouth and start actually being a fucking parent. Now, what did mama have to say? <laughs> We're going to see what mama got to say this time. <laughs> So, mom is telling her, like, yes, I know who it is. I know you're talking about. You're not all the way fucking tripping ball sack. Just but, a little bit. But the one thing that bothers me is she goes into the furnace and she pulls out what it looks like rags yep. covering something. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck is that? I honestly thought she was going to pull out another fucking, like, but secret like, alcohol bottle or some <laughs> shit. Let me show you my real bottle. <laughs> When I first saw this, I thought it was, she was just going to pull out uh, an identical hat or something. That would have been... That, I got that the was... same hat yesterday. Mm-hmm. So, I'm like, okay. Well, she pulls out the fucking dude's glove. That's right. That he's killing kids with. First of all, why the fuck are you holding on to that as a trophy? Mm-hmm. Well, because she's like, I did this. I murked this nigga. I put this together. Yeah, that's fucked up. From First of all, why would you want... That type of trophy. Oh, yeah, this is from when I killed a child murderer. You sick but bitch. Like, hey, nigga, did you yeah. kill one? Did you shut? No. You, you killed a child you. murderer? You ain't do that. I did that. First of all, I'd have been like, you sick little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, when I, I'm about to go to sleep and tell this nigga to kill you. Well. Which, we'll later, see. but... She pulls out the glove. Girl knows, oh, shit, that's a glove. That's a nigga, you know. They all, they, they put everything together. And mom tells a story of him being, I guess he, what was it, 20 killed, oh, like 20, 20, 20 kids, I think. He yeah. killed 20 kids and they, um, they gasoline this nigga up and his crib up and burned him and he's dead and she needs to not worry about it. She had mom handled it and all this bitch. Fuck you. <laughs> Bitch, I just seen this nigga in my sleep chasing me down with fucking weapons. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me not to fucking sweat it? No, bitch. Go to that's sleep. Why, you see, that's what she played. She's like, okay, mom. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, okay. Like, when I kill this nigga, you next. I'm going to buck you. <laughs> I'm going to buck all your clothes. Buck your clothes. So then that happens, and <laughs> what was after this? She starts telling people she knew who he was. Then she well, calls, after this, my next note is that Nancy calls Glenn, and they form a plan. As well, she calls Glenn. He's supposed to meet her at midnight yes. on the porch. At the bar. No. <laughs> Brains. <laughs> on the bar. But, um, yeah, Glenn's supposed to meet her. Um, then there was a weird scene. I guess Glenn's getting ready to jack off to Miss America. So she Miss Nude America. Miss Nude America, which I didn't know was a thing. It's, I thought I didn't think it was. I thought he was just fucking with his mom. His mom came in there and she's like, "How are you listening to the TV and your records at the same time?" He's like, "No, nah, I'm listening to music. I'm just watching the TV. Miss Nude America about to come on." And she's like, "Oh, ha ha ha! Very funny, motherfucker." Yeah. So he's gonna get his shake weight on. That's right. And um. And a two and a one. <laughs> <laughs> My body all over your body. His body, he was, yeah. He all over Any, his body. Anyways. <laughs> so, yeah, they're supposed to meet at midnight because... On the she, porch. She's planning to go to sleep and yank this nigga out of her dream, which yep. I don't know what they thought that was going to do. If you bring him to the real world, you can kill his ass for real. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Glenn's dad's being an asshole at this point, too. Yeah, yep. so, Glenn, so she, called, she called Glenn's phone... Trying to talk to him, make sure he ain't sleep. And he is. And he's upstairs, knocked the fuck out. The parents, the mom, she's kind of cool. Like, you know, whatever. You can talk to this nigga, but the dad. He's sitting outside with the beard, just looking up at Nancy, looking out the window. He's like, I don't want like our son hanging out with that weird ass girl. Yeah. And obviously her dad suffers from LDS. Mm. <laughs> yes. So Nancy gets on the phone. Well, he gets on the phone next time Nancy calls. Pretty much tells her, "Bitch, fuck off. My son ain't fucking with you. Nobody Glenn wants." Glenn, sleepy, can't talk right now. Click. Yeah, like bitch. Leaves the phone off the hook. Actually, I forgot. Yeah, like old bitch. school tactic. <laughs> bitch, right. go go die on your own. My son will not be a party to shenanigans, and he <laughs> is anyway. That's right. Too late. Too late, Lord Raiden. So they cut to the cuz up there sleep. 
Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, this nigga is sinking into his bed. Mm-hmm. And come, I'm free falling. I'm sorry. He free fall. Free fall. And all of a sudden, you get a fountain of blood shooting up onto the roof. And his mama see that shit. He raised yeah. the roof. He raised the roof. Tore it down. Mom comes in. Mommy knows shit. She's like, ah! Like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, she see her son's fucking brains on the fucking roof. And guts, too. They show like the water. It starts going around and you see like the little stretchy tendon parts like stretching on the shit. Nigga. Yeah. He dead as fuck. Intestine. And then you thought this shit was PG-13. PG. I could have sworn it. Man. That nigga's brains and blood is all over that ceiling. Yeah. Uh, the woman's so. chest got ripped open. <laughs> Makes it so. Niggas getting uh, hung and swinging in jail. But I will say, uh, well, I don't know. I think I skipped something. So before, no, after bro died, I think, Nancy gets a call, even though she ripped her fucking- Oh, we did skip that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so Nancy gets a call- and he said something to her the first time. Well, she got mad after he they they dis- well, they put her on silent mode, old school style. They just left the phone yeah. off the hook. And she got mad and ripped out her phone. And she's like, oh, smart move, Nancy. What if Glenn calls? Yeah. Tied the cord around the phone, sat on the bed. And as she walks out, the phone starts ringing. Yeah, like smooth move, x lax <laughs> So she answers the phone and Freddie, I guess, licks her face. He's and like, says, I'm, I'm your boyfriend, boyfriend now, Nancy. And then the bottom of the phone turns into his tongue and it like licks her lips. And then bro dies painful death. Well, painful. I don't even know if it's painful. He's just, he's well, you just, don't know what he did down there. Anyways. Yeah. Think about so, it, don't you? <laughs> Nancy, um, I don't remember what happened after he dies. Why did he get eaten by the bed? The cops and everybody are all over there in the corners, like throwing up or some shit. Yeah. And the dad goes across the street and she like waves at her. He waves at her and she's just kind of like, whatever. And her plan now is like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to stay awake. I'm going to set traps. She's going to get her Kevin McAllister on. Or I should say Kevin McAllister gets his motherfucking Nancy on because this came out years before Home Alone. Right. She's setting traps. Put a, She's hanging this triple H sledgehammer from the ceiling. She's putting the gunpowder inside a light bulb. She's making trip wires and shit. All kind of traps for his ass. And then she's going to purposely go to sleep so that she can bring him into the real world and fuck him up. So she goes to sleep. And then she's walking around the boiler room. <clears throat> and eventually, your boy grabs her up. Uh, I think she set an alarm or some shit. And he got grabbed. Well, you think she didn't pull him out of the work because she wakes up and she's like, oh, maybe I am crazy. Uh, and he jumps up from behind the bed, yeah. which made Cameron damn near fall out of the damn seat that he was sitting in. Yeah. Yeah. So now- which, which jump scare was it? Was it that one where you like, where are you black at? Where are you black at? That was later. That was later. So now he's about- to, <laughs> I knew- I thought she pulled him out. They're getting ready for a battle. Now- <laughs> They, they Exi- the God, I wish I recorded that. They got you with the suspense. Anxiety level is clearly dark red now. 100%. <laughs> Anxiety level is at an all-time high. It was to the point my heart was beating so fast that it started making it <laughs> weird to breathe. Mm-hmm. Mixing that with alcohol and other influential, you know, things. Um, yeah, it was... It got a little intense real fast in the last, what, 20 mm. minutes? Yeah, pretty much. So, last 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, that, that part made me jump. Now they're, well, they're tussling again in his house. Yep. Because I remember he, he he she runs out the room. So he locks, he, uh, yeah, she locks yeah. him in there. Yeah, he's he's banging on the door. She, she like busting out the window. He's like, Dad, Dad. Yeah. Trying to get there. And the cop is out there like, Oh, well, sorry, Nancy. She's like, shut the fuck up and get my dad. And, he's the, and then yeah. he starts screaming. And then you kind of, I don't know if he saw him, but you could kind of see Fred because he breaks out of the room. Yeah, he gets hit by a hammer. The Triple H joint comes swinging down from the ceiling. He's right in the fucking Yeah, because obviously the nigga, he can kill kids and do all kind of shit, but he don't know how to get out a fucking door. Don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. He's in the real world. He has no powers here. Eh, whatever. <laughs> so he gets hit. And then. Then this nigga falls down the stairs at some point. Yeah, he did. Good. Well, when he got hit by the, uh, he knows that there got hit by the hammer. Yeah, he was, he like stumbled, stumbled and he around fell over the balcony, and he falls over the balcony. He tumbling down the stairs. He falls right by her feet by the front door. Yeah, and she starts takes off running. Nobody's all these people were standing outside staring at her house, and nobody sees this burnt guy running around through these little windows, but they can see her. She's weird. I don't. They might be doing weird shit. It's fine. Don't worry about it. True. <laughs> so after that. 
forget what he ran into that burned him up. Like, Way start, she started. He it turned on the, the light switches and it was like blowing up. Yeah, and he she, got he got a look, look like a grenade hit him. And yeah. Shit. Like, <laughs> oh. Yeah. So then she they run down to the basement. Yeah, and that's where she ends up putting him on fire down there. Yeah, and this part bugged me because that whole house would have been up in flames. How did she put him on fire? I don't even remember. How did he catch fire? She just she put gas. Oh, she threw gasoline on him and lit him. That's right. She put right. gasoline on him and just threw a match on this nigga. That's right. And he's like burning up because Cameron was mad. He's talking about, man, that house be burning down. It would have been. But they do show that it does start catching fire and smoking though. So you're all right. So then... Um, well, the cops finally get in the house at this point. She finally gets her dad's attention. They break the door down. But then when she tries to take him downstairs to go find Fred, he ain't there. And they go back upstairs see fire footprints leading upstairs. What they find up there, Cameron? They go into her mom's room, and he laying on top of her mom on fire. Yeah. And he burns her, too. Like, she looks like the thing from SpongeBob that wanted chocolate. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's chocolate? Cho- yeah, she looks like chocolate. Did you just say chocolate? <laughs> and Freddie take her down to hell, baby, because the little portal vortex thing, it looked like a waterbed almost, because she likes to take down to like a That's blue what background. that's supposed to be, hell. I- <clears throat> I just thought it was taking her soul and shit. Because it looks pretty blue to me. Nah, I mean, I don't know. It's too, I don't know. So then, <laughs> after that, I guess she... F- she she said she knows the secrets. Mom's done. Oh, look at the dad. That's right. The dad leaves and the door shuts. Yeah, because I thought it was over until Chris pointed out, like, no, nah, that, that nigga Freddie shut that door. Mm-hmm. Because I thought, I was like, why the cop, why would the cop slam the door like that? Like he was pissed or something that he had to be there, mm-hmm. which I would have been as a cop. <laughs> so well, he finally seeing that body, he know that some weird shit was really happening. He know yeah. his daughter ain't crazy. So I guess she felt like the secret to killing Freddie is hurting his feelings. <laughs> oh, like you, they, they, they elaborate more upon this in Larry movies, but pretty much his, he's, he's, He's powered by fear, I guess is probably the best way to put it. So if you don't, you ain't scared of this nigga, then he can't hurt you. He loses his power. He goes away. Which pissed me off. So first of all, you brought him into the real world. That shit don't work. <laughs> but like, yeah, like you've been fighting this man. You've been, you done set traps. You done went toe to toe with him. And the one thing at the end of the movie you thought was going to work is, oh, let me hurt his pride a little bit and tell him he ain't shit. All uh, right. I'm a little scared. I'm not scared of you anymore. Which this feels like. Um, I feel like Home Alone referenced that. You think so? Multiple times with the boiler furnace thing, mm-hmm. and then you remember after the furnace, uh, cut off in Home Alone, he went outside and did this whole "I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not yeah. afraid of you." And all of a sudden, the, f- the furnace was no longer a monster. Oh yeah, he's like, shut up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's just they that's re- pretty much just funny. I was thinking about it while I watching this. It's like. See if Cameron can have his moment of taking the power away from Freddy by facing his fears and getting over the uh-huh. fear. Well, well she, I will figure out if that happened at the end of the movie. But she um she does that and he looks like he disappears into the fucking floor or something like that. Mm-hmm. And um I don't remember where the scene was that had me jump like that. Was it that? I thought it was that motherfucker popping up when you jumped up and started screaming that shit, but I don't remember exactly. It might have been, because after that, I didn't jump again until he came through that door. Oh, well, he didn't come through the door. We'll talk, because after she says, you know, I take the power away from you, he tries to slash her, but he, like, fades away because he's gone now. And uh, it immediately, when she opens up the door, you, should, some, you know something weird is fucking happening, because she was upstairs, but when she opens up the door, the door leads to the front yard, and everything is, like, all sunny and blue skies, and her mom is back and everything. And she's like, mom's like, hey, you, you good? Everything right? She's like, oh, yeah, you know, I just slept for a long time. And so her friends roll up. All her friends that died, they come back. She gets in the car with them to drive off. But then something happens. Your boy's like, I can't control it. And the top comes up, and it's this fucking stripes of the sweater on top of the thing. And they drive off. And then before the movie ends, the mom is still waving. You hear the kids start going, one, two, Freddy's coming for you. And then I know where, pow. Freddy's hand bursts through the fucking glass part of the door, this little tiny ass hole in the middle, and it grabs her mom and sucks, pulls, yeets her whole entire body through the tiny hole in the front door. And that is how the movie ends. It was that part where he, she brought him out and thought he was gone. Cause I, she was still in the room when yeah, I but, jumped. Well, that's why I like that, that scare when she was like, maybe I'm crazy. 
Because you kept saying, come out, come out. Yeah, and that's they, 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 let, they let several beats go by to make you think maybe you're tripping. And then that's when he's like, Rawr! and that's when he's like, where, are you? where are you black at? Where are you black at? <laughs> <laughs> but there you go. That was a Nightmare on Elm Street. But I did look this up real quick just to see, Cameron. I looked up the ending of Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. And she says, Freddy seemingly is dissolves into thin air, unable to exist in a world where people don't fear him. No one else in the film was able to conquer their fear of Freddy, but Nancy could. And that's why she's the sole survivor of the nightmares. Said so this is the point where Wes Craven wanted to end the film, but in order to keep the possibility of a sequel open, they added one final scene. It's a foggy, dreamlike morning, and Nancy and her mother, Olivia, and walk out the front door of their house. Nancy gets picked up by Glenn in his convertible, and Tina and Rod are in the back seat. As Nancy enters the car, the top of the convertible pops down, striped red and green like Freddy's sweater. The windows roll up, the kids become trapped in the car. The mom, oblivious to their terror, grins and waves goodbye to them as one of the local children jump rope, and Freddy's arm grabs her and sucks her into the house. Are the victims of the film still dead, or was the entire film just a nightmare in Nancy's mind? There's a purposeful ambiguity ambiguity sorry there that leaves the final moment open to interpretation in a world where dreams of reality blend as one maybe both versions can be true but if freddie had remained really and truly dead as craven intended in the previous scene there would be no room for a sequel that's true and there's a little gift for that shot right there and that always looks all goofy pulling that dummy through the little thing yeah. <laughs> like you put a blow-up doll through there but yeah originally yeah that was, it was supposed to be a one and done but your man was like you know maybe we'll make a sequel or something add this final scene to it well, and she, well, spoiler, but this actress and this character does come back, so she's not dead. Like I, said, I just looked at it as like the story ended with the her saying "fuck you, you're not around," but then they just added this as like a little teaser, maybe one final nightmare she had or some shit. I don't know, but we'll come back to this later when we go into the next movie. But for now, we're gonna go to promo and advertisements, and then I'm gonna wake Chris up, and we're gonna get his score for a Nightmare on Elm Street. Don't go away. Hi, guys. We interrupt your favorite podcast to interrupt you with an ad for your new favorite podcast. Wait, wait. Isn't this playing on somebody else's show? Exactly. So then how are we? I thought we were their new favorite podcast. Well, we're going to become their new favorite podcast after they hear this advertisement for our show. What's our show called, Justine? Superiority (laughs) Complex. Yeah. Where can they find us, Patrick? Uh, Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, exactly. You can go to at Soup Complex on Twitter, S-O-U-P Complex, and you can go to Facebook.com. Slash soup complex, but our main page is on Podbean, and you can find us there at www.superioritycomplex.podbean.com. New episodes are out every Thursday. Justine, yes. what do we talk about on the Superiority Complex? Nerdy stuff. Perfect. Don't get all sensual with your voice. Yeah, did you hear that? I heard it. It's a little inappropriate. If you want to hear a little more of that, tune in to the Superiority Complex. One more time, Justine, what do we talk about? Nerdy stuff. Nah, wasn't no. the same. You tried. <laughs> hey, Chris. Uh, Chris is not in the house anymore. Chris was never in the house. Hey, Chris. Chris. Drop a bomb for him. <laughs> that was me. What I do? Wrong! <laughs> Wrong! There you go. <laughs> Chris, what did you think about Nightmare on Elm Street? <laughs> I'm at the Lord after the listeners too. That shit was loud. Oh, uh, uh, damn. Uh, I mean, <laughs> he was not. Come on to the mic, Chris. I mean, this is a, uh, this is one of my favorite movies, though. I will say that. I just well, he said earlier he can quote the whole movie, Cameron. I, I can go the movie beat, beat for beat because I used to watch this all the damn time. Mm. So. This is automatically gets a nine for me. Mm. So you agree with PJ? Why is it a nine exactly though? Because it's just a, a classic story uh, goes um, and it uh, takes it, it takes it slow, lets the suspense build. Yeah, there's a lot and, of build up, and um, the pay, the payoff, it, the, even the payoffs in question. Does she actually get out? We were talking about that. Yeah, somebody was taking a nappy. <laughs> now we were reading online it says that originally Wes Craven was going to just end it at the part where she's like you're not you're nothing he fades away but they wanted to add that extra little bit at the end yeah. just in case they wanted to keep going but he was going to end he was going to end that shit well I said I read mm-hmm. something else too that also said it was going to end it was going to be that and then it was going to end with her like getting in the car with the friends and driving off and then the question is that did, was that whole movie a dream she had and then you would never know because it wasn't like well you just interpret it but New Line was like, we got to make more money. Mm-hmm. Add the stinger so we can make like eight more of these fucking things. 
We got to make money. That's right. And they they, well, they did until they didn't. I guess if we continue on, we'll talk about it. But there was a time where it started to drop. And then I would just say, too, I gave it an eight before. I think I'm going to still keep my eight. I like it. I like some of the sequels more. It's fine. It's a slow burn movie. There are times where it's like, I kind of, it kind of drifty slightly. Just waiting to see. There's not a lot. Like Cameron said, there's only like, what, four people that die in this movie. It's a low body count, but it's, it's a low budget joint. It's an introductory type thing. They were going, they were going, I don't, even though he said they're going, hey, they're going to make another one. I don't believe that. They're going to make another one. Another one. Mm-hmm. At least that's what I believe anyway. It's like Halloween had already had several sequels by this point. They knew what they was doing. Halloween, even Evil Dead and all that shit. But so, no, funny enough, they did show Evil Dead for a second. You know, it's a call too because uh, in the Evil Dead, there's a sh- there's a shot when he goes into the basement when they find a the Necronomicon and all that and they have a poster for the Hills Have Eyes and it's ripped in the background and that was like at the time Sam Raimi like a little end joke saying that his movie is gonna be scarier because Wes Craven did that movie too and he's he left a ripped poster saying like our movie's gonna like this movie's gonna be way scarier than yours so he ripped it as a joke. And then in this movie, they put the Evil Dead in there as a little movie that they're watching on TV and yeah. deal with the real scary shit. So it's like a little in friendship friendly battles they were having in the background. <laughs> if you knew about that shit, but yeah, it's an eight out of ten. It's enjoyable. I like the shit that comes. Like the second one is fucking hilarious. I can't wait to watch the second one again. And the third one is a, the Wes Craven. The only ones he did after this, he did this one. He did three, and he did New Nightmare. Those are the only ones that he actually came back for. It's New mm-hmm. Nightmare and the third one. So a lot of people, always, a lot of people say the first one and the third one are the two best ones. Period. Yep. Do you agree? I agree. There you go. And, and New Nightmare, that's also... The ones that he did are always the ones that everybody said are the best ones. Because he's the original creator. He wrote and directed. He created all this shit. So, of course, when he come back, it's going to be better. And that part three is where you get the Welcome to Prime Time, bitch. That's welcome what, to Prime Time, That's bitch. the movie where he starts to be more goofy acting and shit. The most. And, and two, it, it kind of starts to seep a little bit. But by three and forward, he's there. That's He's the Freddy mm-hmm. that you expect him to be. But this one's fine. It's an 8 out of 10. I keep my score from the first time. If you heard the first episode, my thoughts are pretty much the fucking same. So, But we're going to say Cameron for last here because this is all about Cameron this week. So Cameron, what did you think about the movie? How was your experience? Are you still afraid of the dream warrior? <clears throat> um, the movie was all right. It was all right. Yeah, I'm not going to say it was bad. But you're not going to say it was good either, huh? I'm not going to say I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was all right though. It was not as bad as I thought it was. As bad as in a bad movie or scary, like intimidating. Oh, it wasn't as scary as you thought it was gonna be. Nah, okay. Not really. The, the last thirty minutes was honestly. I was as well. Look at this. You can be scared the whole movie. The last like ten minutes. It would I would think anyway. And you can tell me if I'm right. With sake. Like suck all the the fear away when you watch him start bumble fucking and falling downstairs and getting hit in the stomach with hammers and shit. Yeah, I think I even said that when the original review was like it's scary, but then you see him start. I mean, because he's in the real world, I guess he doesn't have his powers, quote unquote. But it's still your boy is looking like a jackass running around this house. Like I tell people for years, for years though, it was Freddy Krueger. Of course, was the intimidator for me. But it was the part that really kept me from watching the movies was never Freddy Krueger himself. Uh-huh. I didn't like the thought of it wasn't even him as a person. It was the thought of what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Like, OK, I can't even, like no defense in your dream. I can't, I can't you, have you a peaceful to, dream. You go to him. sleep and you die. Like, you, there's no way to defend yourself. And that's why it's so good, though. Right. So it was more of that. And. Like I tell people, it was the things that stuck with me over the years was never Freddy Krueger himself because I can see his face on a picture and not think nothing of it. I can't you turn that fucking DVD case over. I saw you do it. I can look at him and not get bothered. I don't like the sound. I don't like the songs. The two songs they play in the movie was always the, the Freddy theme and the one two shit. What's the theme? The da, 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 yes. Da, da. So the piano theme and the song they sing actually were more intimidating to me growing up than I actually Freddy Krueger himself. So you're more scared of the sound design than the <laughs> character. Yeah, because it's like, I always put two into the, when I see Freddy Krueger's picture or something like that, I don't immediately think like, oh shit, like his face, I always, those songs in that pop up mm-hmm. in my head and it's like, now they're in my fucking head consistently ah, okay. and they won't go away. So now once I hear the songs, now I'm thinking about him. Mm-hmm. And I get to the point of all of a sudden now you're getting ready to go to sleep. And it's like the songs are still in my fucking head. No yeah. matter what I would do, 
play the game, watch movies, watch something else. It wasn't it wasn't even the one two thing. It was always that fucking piano thing. Now I'm intimidated. Like now now I'm thinking about him. I could easily get see a picture of him. Like I I, I turn the case over and continue my conversation. Fuck. Uh-huh. But and if I don't on the back of the case too, which is Yeah, okay. like I walked in, I seen it, I turned it over and then I greeted PJ. Like I never even it was just a quick like 10 second pause. Mm-hmm. But if I would have walked in and you would have been playing a song on the TV, I would have probably left. <laughs> Turn around and walk right back nope. up. I would have went home and found something to do to distract myself. <laughs> like, nope. like, I would have went to the football field or something. Mm-hmm. So I will say watching the movie, he didn't bother me as much as the they kept playing that piano riff mm-hmm. throughout the movie. And whenever they played that, that's where it was making my anxiety go up. Because right. I was expecting him, but they never showed him during the piano shit. That's good horror. So, and then the whole little one, two thing, they never show him. They just fuck with me though, pretty much the whole movie. So that was making my anxiety go up. Because every time I heard that, anxiety meter's going up. Right. By the time I see him, now I'm intimidated because my fucking anxiety's through the roof and I'm I'm anticipating him. Mm-hmm. So they did a good job it with that. It sounds like he did some good directing going on. Yeah, thumbs up <laughs> to you. You did a good job. Mm-hmm. Um... I will say one thing scary about Freddy Krueger was not himself. I was more scared of the actor. Robert Englund? I would see him in other shit. Well, because, you I know, mean, he has makeup on. He still looks it's like... Exact, it's him. Yeah. And then I would see him in other shit. Because funny story, I was watching the Jamie Foxx show. That's right. And he's in the Jamie Foxx show, right? Mm-hmm. With his Cameo, one episode. Yeah. And I remember watching the whole episode. I was at my dad's house by myself. I'm watching this episode... Didn't think nothing of it. I went to Nanny's house and I watched the episode again. Mm-hmm. And Nanny's actually watching this, this shit with me. Oh. And as we're watching the Jamie Foxx show, she already didn't want to watch the shit in the first place. But for some I reason- say, I was surprised she watched it. She was pissed that I made her watch it. But for some reason, she stuck around for this episode. <laughs> and I knew something was off by, first of all, she didn't make me turn the channel. Cause I was, she was watching fucking E, and I uh, turned that shit off. Mm-hmm. So she stuck around for this episode, but by mid episode, she had went off and did, she went upstairs. She was kind of like, okay, I've seen enough, but she never told me to turn it off. And I think uh, the whole time she was trying, like you could, because I kept seeing her kind of looking at the TV. She was trying to figure out who the fuck that actor <laughs> was. She figured the shit out and left. <laughs> like, yeah, enjoy, it, nigga. Since you wanted to watch this bullshit. <laughs> so I'm watching it in the whole episode. He's supposed to be like a art connoisseur or whatever the fuck like, yeah, like they're, they're supposed to be buying some expensive painting and somebody steals it and they're trying to figure out who stole it the whole time I'm watching this episode I cannot figure out this dude but I'm like I know this actor from some fucking where mm-hmm. I know him I can't put a face on him I can't put a voice on him because he had a regular British voice so sounding shit is he British I don't think so he had, well, he had a he was trying to sound British in this episode by the end of the episode, he's supposed to be like, he's the art thief, of course. Mm-hmm. He's trying to act like he's hurt or he had a heart attack, some shit like that. As Jamie Foxx figures out, okay, this is the art thief, blah, blah, blah. He kind of, I forget exactly what he say. He said, I'm going to be your worst nightmare. And At the end of the episode. Isn't it? Yeah, and they, they shut, they cut to a, they had a scene where if you watch past the credits at the end, they show him like their little bloopers and shit. Aww. The nigga looks at the fucking um, camera and he winks like he does in the fucking movies. Aww. And when he did that shit, my fucking stomach immediately got sick. <laughs> he dropped immediately. Like I was almost like, like <laughs> anxiety through the roof now. What are you playing? Oh, you found it? Uh-huh. Yes, well, I would have gotten away with it too. If it wasn't for this meddling bellhop. You better get out of here, boy. I'll be your worst nightmare on Elf Street. Get on! Yeah, yeah. He held his hand up like the claws. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. And if you watch on, like, the, uh, when they cut to the end, he looks at the camera and wink, and I'm like, fuck. So, I will say, the movie did its it did what it was supposed to. It kept me intimidated by it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say I like it. I will say 
I mean, it wasn't as bad as I expected. Mm. Like I said, I think that new nightmare set a bar high <laughs> for but me. I, people, I know people that are you not scared of these movies, but they are said they were. Well, they are. They said they were scared of that one. Yeah, because um, they they even made him his makeup look worse or like more. He looks more burned and yeah. red, and it's like looks yeah more intimidating. So I will say it's not as bad. As I, it could have been. I honestly think I jumped more watching Halloween <laughs> or in, in Friday the Thirteenth. I mean, it was kind of straightforward. And he shows up, he kills you. It's a low budget movie, man. Uh, he, he, you see him. You know, you knew all the teenagers were going to die at mm-hmm. some point. And so, so, so I expected a lot of the shit that was happening. Like I said, the the first hour. It wasn't really bothering me. It was just raising my fucking anxiety. <laughs> so they did what they were supposed to do. You were scared. You felt they, the horror of the horror movie. They they definitely got me to the point where if if shit would have popped off in the first thirty minutes, it wouldn't have made me jump. That build up. That's what Chris said. That's yeah. Tension. It wouldn't have bothered me, but they got me to the point where. I would have fucking had a heart attack if that would have happened. Anything. <laughs> Any noise in the back. If you would have sneezed, I would have fucking had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. So, it did its part. As for a score, I don't, man, I don't want to give it a score. <laughs> it's a movie for real, for real. I, I'll give it a six. A six. All right. Because it gets points for, I think the effects were decent for the time for 84. Mm-hmm. I give it points for having my mans from Enter the Dragon. John Saxon. Mitchell. <laughs> Not that movie. Hey. I would never what? Forget, I never never forget oh. him for um messing with the old dude from uh messing up the uh, script for Enter the Dragon because oh. he was supposed to die. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, y'all can kill y'all can kill Jim Kelly. I ain't dying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's cause him complaining they they killed off Jim Kelly. Yep. <laughs> Kill that black man. Don't kill me. Fuck that man. Bullshit, Mr. Hand Man. Yeah, I um <laughs> Watch I, it, Dre. I give it points too for the for the build up. It as a horror movie, it served its purpose. Oh. I can see now as an adult why the fuck uh, a, a four year old would have been completely intimidated by this. Not the right age for that. No. Me as a twenty seven year old, it's like get the fuck over it. <laughs> and I did it, like I said it wasn't it wasn't that bad but me as a four year old and I can looking back now I understand why for all the people that laughed at me over the years fuck you <laughs> go take I, we're all parents now I want you to have your kids sit down and watch this movie and then have them terrorize the rest of their life and deal with it mm-hmm. and you tell me how that goes for the next 18 years eat a dick fuck you two times <laughs> 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 so yeah I give it a 6 it wasn't terrible I, I would never give it high a high score though just because it is it is what it is we'll see if the movies drop lower then because this is Cam versus Freddy number round 1 round 1 I feel ones. like I won this round you, yeah you got through it you did. I won this round yeah and I think part two, I don't think you'll be, I think you'll be fine again. Cause part two is more goofy. I remember than any. I honestly don't think any of these, if I can get past this one, I don't think they will scare me until we get the new it's nightmare. nightmare I'm, one. That's going to be a, that's going to be a troublemaker for me. Mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm not looking forward to it. Three, three might have its moments. Cause Wes Craven comes back and yeah. brings a little bit of horror back. Cause the second one starts doing a lot of goofy shit. But then from three forward, it's like, yeah, all right, after four hour forward, I mean, so new nightmare, I think you're fine. Yeah, and then we get Freddy versus Jason. That's just not scary at all to me, anyway. I've it's seen hilarious. that one already. Um, there you go. That just answered my, proved my point, right? You there. know, I'll keep you guys updated. We'll see how how good I sleep today. <laughs> Nine, ten, never, never sleep, sleep again. again. <laughs> now nah, I'm I'll probably be knocked out. I'm I'm pretty yeah. intoxicated now. I'm and it's after know. midnight anyway. And yeah, I'm, and I'm I, hungry. You already know I'm. Over- I was already knocked out. Yeah, I was saying, I'm gonna get you home anyways. I know you gotta go work and everything. Like I said, it, it, it didn't it didn't bother me though. It, it bothered me that last few times. That one jump had me. Where but, you black at? But I think every, quoting Spike Lee movie. <laughs> I think every movie gets me at least one <laughs> time like that. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that was a good one too. It's was perfect build up in time. Yeah, think. like I said, I knew she brought him into the real world. Uh, he's there somewhere. He's, 
She's going to go downstairs in the basement or some shit like that. Where is he at? He's not showing up. Okay, this is getting stupid. And then he pops up. Surprise, motherfucker. Surprise, motherfucker. So, yeah, I give it a six. There you go. Nine, eight, and six. Kept my score. Me, I kept my score. Chris and PJ agree. And Cameron, he survived. Until (laughs) next time. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually skip some of the formalities because I got to get Chris home so he can go get ready for work and everything. Go get his sleep. I will say just follow us on Twitter at capital H, capital V, capital H, capital P, lowercase I, cast. I can't skip that because people will be mad. It was just type in Home Video Hustle anywhere you start listening to podcasts or any of your social media outlets. We're there. I assure you that. And yeah, next week, I don't know what the fuck we're doing now. We didn't record any videos. We'll figure that shit out. But for now, I just got one more thing left to tell him. I'm Brett. <laughs> Chris. And I survived. What? 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 DJs, DJs, DJs. Have a good rest of your Friday. Have a good rest of whatever the fuck day you listen to this on. I don't know when. I mean, Halloween is coming up. Jesus. Yeah. It may be happening sooner than later. But Cameron will uh, once again face another fear at some point. I'll give him a break for a while. It's like I do PJ in Star Wars, but he ain't getting no year long breaks like PJ. <laughs> We're going to get through them back to back. But I don't know. I, I said, we let me see. This is shit. When this comes out, this is like down there the end of September. So shit, man, we are getting real close to horror, ain't we? So we're going to look into that. I'm going to get some bags ready and we're going to see what pops off. I did see PJ this weekend. I did go by his house. I talked to him for a few hours. I won't give up too much of his business, but there is a reason he hasn't been here, folks. I won't, I'll let him tell y'all about it if he wants to, but I was there. I seat him with me and Cameron was there for like three or four hours chilling with him and son and his mama and his new dog. He got a dog. As he said, it was like, what, six weeks old or some shit? A little tiny ass dog. Yeah. Pitbull mixed with something. I can't remember now. I don't remember. Or the name was like Isis Blue, right? That's what he named Isis it. Isis Blue West. There you go. I told him he's like sounding like Jay-Z out here, but it's mm. fine. So PJ's doing good, folks. Don't worry. It's all good. I'm going to try and drag his ass out of here, but it's it's, it's going to be complicated right now. I'll just say that. And I'll leave you with one more thing. Peace. Peace. Thank you.